an Excel worksheet brought to you by Shift Key Solutions and I am Eric Ripley. In this video tutorial we'll be covering the steps that are in line with the Advanced Excel 2007 Custom Training Manual Exercise 3. Here in our worksheet I have already identified the description name range. Name range. If I come here and I select this I'll see that with this being selected in my name box it has the name of description. Among this, if I click my drop down from my name box I see that I have a number of other items with name ranges already applied. But if we go down to the cell A25 through A39 we're going to apply a data validation in which will give us a drop down list in which to choose from. The idea or the scenario for this exercise is that end users will be able to use this order form and when they choose a description of an item to be sold they can only choose one of the items that are in the list. So let's get to it. From here I'm going to have my range selected here of A25 through A39. From there I'm going to go to my I'm going to go to my data tab and then in my data tab in the data tools group I'm going to click data validation. When I do that I'm going to get my data validation dialog box. From here I'm going to make sure that I'm on my settings tab first and then click my drop down and then choose list. From here I can either type in a list separated with commas or I can type in a in this case a name range. I'm going to put in equals description. From there, I'm going to go to my input message tab, and then I'm going to give this a title. The title will be available items. And then from there, I'll press tab. And then in the message, I'll type in there, select from the list of items shown. And then I'll go down to my error tab and from here I can choose one of three types of styles. The stop style will stop a user from entering anything other than what's in the list. A warning or information style will give a dialog box warning to the user that they shouldn't choose anything from the list but that does give them the choice to overwrite it. In this case I want to choose stop. In the title I'll be typing invalid entry. And in the message, I'm going to type, you must select from the list of items shown. Now from here, I'll just click OK. And I've just applied data validation to this range. If I click on any one of these cells, I'll see that this little screen tip follows me along. If I click off of it, it goes away. But if I come back to it, I'll see that it's there. Now if it is in my way or it otherwise bothers me, I can click and drag and drag that up to where it's kind of out of the way. So now whenever I click on it, it'll appear there. So let's test this out. If I click in here and just type pants and then press tab, I get my error or invalid message dialog box here. Click cancel and then move this up a little bit then from there I can click my drop down and then choose one of these and it's a valid entry. Well that concludes my video tutorial on data validations. In the coming tutorials I'll talk about doing an additional data validation for quantity, limiting the number of quantities from 1 to 500 that can only be entered in here. Anything over 500 a supervisor needs to approve and then I'll also go into additional tutorials on how to complete a VLOOKUP for my code, a VLOOKUP for the weight, along with price, and then do a simple calculation for cost. Then after that I'll also do a additional code, an additional formula here, which will be an HLOOKUP that will also cross-reference the shipping method. And then to close everything off, I'll put in an additional function 
called an if error function inside the formula that goes inside of each of these so that they appear blank as opposed to the pound in a not available uh, error message. Thanks for joining me. And if you didn't know before, then now you know. And I encourage you to share this with other people who might need help with this. Thank you. And don't forget to comment.